Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we will discuss about the anatomy of mandible. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Starting with the general information. The mandible is a mobile bone of the cranium. This bone consists of a horizontal part called the body of mandible and two vertical parts called the rami of mandible. The body and the ramus meet at the angle called as the angle of mandible. Let's have a look. As you can see, this is the body of mandible, the horizontal part, and these two vertical parts are the rami of mandible. This is the angle where the body of mandible and rami meet. We will discuss the parts separately and see what all anatomical features they possess. Starting with the body of mandible. The upper alveolar part of the body bears the alveolar arc on its superior border. The arc has dental alveoli for upper teeth. And the alveoli are separated by the interalveolar septa. The rounded massive inferior border of the body forms the base of the mandible. Let's have a look. This is the superior view of the bone. And this arc is the alveolar arc. These sockets which you can see are the dental alveoli. And they are separated by these interalveolar septa. This outlined region is the base of the mandible. On the midline of the outer surface of the base lies the mental protuberance. And on each side of this mental protuberance is the mental tubercle. The mental foramen is on the lateral surface of the body. It is the opening of the mandibular canal, transmitting nerve and vessels. The oblique line runs backwards and upwards from the mental tubercle. Let's have a look. As you can see, this is the mental protuberance or the chin. Here, the mental foramen is present, which transmits the nerve and vessels. This marked line is the oblique line, which runs upwards and backwards from the mental tubercle. The mental spine projects from the midline of the inner surface of the body. The sublingual fossa lies on each side of the mental spine. On both sides of the mental spine, nearer to the inferior border of the mandible is the digastric fossa. Further to the back, the mylohyoid line runs backwards and upwards. And just below the mylohyoid line, there is the submandibular fossa. Let's have a look. So this is the superior view of the bone. This projection which you can see is the mental spine. We discussed that nearer to the inferior border of the mandible, there is this digastric fossa. This is the sublingual fossa, which is present on each side of the mental spine. This line which you can see is the mylohyoid line. And just below this line is this submandibular fossa. With this we complete the anatomical features of the body and move on to the next part, that is the ramus of mandible. On its inner surface, there is mandibular foramen leading to the mandibular canal. The medial border of this foramen projects as the lingula. The mylohyoid groove originates behind the lingula and runs downwards and forwards. It lodges the nerve and vessels. Let's have a look. This small foramen is the mandibular foramen leading to the mandibular canal. The medial border of this foramen projects as the lingula, which is depicted by this yellow line. And this is the mylohyoid groove that runs downwards and forwards. Superiorly, the ramus of the mandible terminates as two processes. Anterior coronoid process and posterior condylar process. The crest for buccinator muscle runs on the inner surface of the ramus, upwards from the surface of the alveoli of the last molars towards the coronoid process. It seems difficult to understand, right? Don't worry, let's have a look at these features so you can understand better. This anterior process is the coronoid process. And this posterior process is the condylar process. On the inner surface of the ramus, we have this crest for the buccinator muscle. The condylar process has this head of mandible, which articulates with the articular fossa of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint. Just below the head is the neck of the mandible. And on the anterior surface of the neck, we have this pterygoid fossa. Lastly, the angle of the mandible bears masseteric tuberosity on its outer surface. 
With this we complete all the anatomical features of the mandible. So that is it for this video guys. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and follow us on Instagram. Links in the description.